Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to 2024, in case this is the first video of me that you watch. I hope it's going to be a good year for you. I hope it's going to be a fun gaming year as well. We need a couple of good games to come out. Naval games, tank games, arms games, strategy games. Many games, as far as I'm concerned, because last year, well, there were okay games, but we can do better. Today we're going to be kicking it off once again with Arms Trade Tycoon, episode 3. Let's have a go. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Tank Tycoon. Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks is its full title, and it's in closed beta right now. If you haven't seen the previous two episodes, I have been building tanks, first for the Brits, and then for the Brits again, and now I've been awarded a contract for the Germans. Now, the Germans want these things on a very, very short notice, and I only have 43 days to complete delivery of 10 tanks. It's not exactly a great tank, at least it doesn't exactly live up to their expectations, but it should do the trick. In the meanwhile, my other tanks have been used in the campaign in Iceland, yes. This is where the Danish and the British have been fighting. Now, I am, I think, situated in Great Britain, but I am not necessarily um, exclusively providing to the British Army, as you can tell by me providing tanks to the Germans. The Danish over here came in with 1,500 horse. I came in with 20 tanks of the Petrov class. Interestingly, um, the Defender's Regiment, which was apparently this, I guess it was the British, said uh, the tank's overall performance was nothing short of a disgrace, contributing to a lamentable outcome on the battlefield. You mean you lost one tank? And you killed 1,300 horse? That is your lamentable outcome? Oh, sorry, you killed like 170. I don't see how this is a lamentable outcome. Anyway, deployment was good, recon was good, targeting was good, hitting was bad. The tank's woeful weapon accuracy proved to be our downfall on the battlefield, as its shots missed their mark time and time again. Ricochet. The tank's wretched rounds ricocheted off the enemy targets. You mean my, my rounds ricocheted off of a horse? Would you like to explain that? How exactly were these horses armored? Because that... Look... The tank's feeble rounds failed to penetrate the enemy's armor <laughs> on their horses. What? They had two kinetic resistance available. They had... I do not understand. Damage. You're right. There's no translation. Okay, this is a placeholder. Okay, I guess even with the gun that we have on this tank, we cannot pen a horse. I'm sorry, British. Um, we'll have to devise better horse penetrating rounds. I don't know. One thing I haven't covered yet is that you can hire administrators, and I probably should have done this before. These are units or, well, people, essentially, that give you a bonus to certain abilities. So in this case, I have William Tritton. I can hire this guy, and he's going to be giving my maintenance a reduction in price. So if you've got a lot of buildings, like a lot of additional buildings built, like bonuses that you attach to the existing buildings, this is going to make those cheaper, which is potentially a big money saver. The guy does take 1500 k in expenses. That's his salary. So let's say building maintenance is 74k um, per month. That's quite a lot. If I can get that done by 10% and have him pay or pay him 1500k, that still gives me 6k positive per month. Also, he reduces the cost of tank production. That is very interesting. So this gentleman is coming to work for me. He's going to get here in five days. Uh, also available is Walter Wilson. Less chance of fire. Uh, less chance of accidents. So he's more a health and safety guy. He also has reduction of time for power unit projects and for running gear projects. I don't really have those. And he was also a bit more expensive. So no, I'm not going to do that. Every now, sorry, every now and then you're going to get pop-ups saying, hey, there's an additional administrator available. Um, do check them out because they might be able to increase production, uh, reduce cost. They have all sorts of interesting benefits. Now, I only have six days left until the Petrov Mark II is complete. And once that is ready, we're going to start shipping these things out. There we go. There's Mr. Tritton. I'm going to immediately assign him here. 
And with that, let's see if that price does indeed drop. Building maintenance 74k. And it is still 74k. All sorts of diplomatic agreements. A trophy has arrived. Well, well, well. Britain has achieved a remarkable success by obtaining a rival's tank, the Leichter Kampfwagen. Its extraordinary feat underscores a resolute determination and tactical prowess, showcasing nation ability to seize and harness the foreign war sorry, foreign advanced war machinery. Um, head to the British headquarters and persuade them to turn over the tank to you before your opponent does. How do I do that? Because it's nice that the game says you need to talk to them. But, oh, here we go. Ah, there we go. So I can buy this thing for 29k. Uh, and I can potentially learn quite a bit from them. Look at the, the price tag. These things are dirt cheap. I'm going to buy that. Fortunately for us, we just received news of a captured intact rival tank. Yes. And it is now mine. So now I can reverse engineer this thing, tear it apart, and see exactly what this has for workings. Um, this does mean that you can start to merge tanks from two different nations together, in a way, and create something that is uh, potentially a Frankenstein, but also potentially a lot better than what you have. Because, for example, these uh, machine, and gewehr, machine guns could be better than what I have on my tanks. So let's start taking this thing apart. Um, I think we're going to start with the machine gun. No, we're going to start with the turret. We're going to start with the turret. It's going to only take four days until we reverse engineer this thing. And, well, let's see what comes out. Let's see what we can learn from the Germans. As I was looking at a new tank design, I also had another look at the Kuban, because I couldn't believe that I didn't actually get this crew to fit. I was just looking at the wrong slot. This is the commander slot, which is something you might have been commenting on in the previous video, but I've recorded these in batches, which means I did not see that. Now, this means that the Kuban is feasible. It's not a great tank, by any stretch of the imagination. But it is feasible. So it is something that can get designed. It is something that can get built. And it is something I actually kind of want to test drive. Um, I kind of feel sad not having a uh, gun in the front. Oh, what? Wow. Okay. Um, now that I have reversed engineered the Krupp turret, I can actually put a gun in this turret. I just have to engineer it first. And it can be either a Maschinengewehr or the Lewis Mark I. This thing has a higher cumulative cost. I'm not really sure what the specs are. So which gun is better. Um, but this would make the tank potentially a lot stronger. It also opens up another crew port or a crew slot. So we can have another, uh, maybe a gunner mechanic. Can we have something like that? You're a gunner mechanic here. So you're going to mechanic, and now we're going to have a full-blown mechanic, which is going to sit over there. We're going to have a gunner here. There. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Now, I can't actually assign this yet, because it says you need to complete the engineering first. So with this... Um, oh, actually, I can also put... No, I cannot put the different tracks on. I need to engineer this first. Let's see how engineering. Here's that new turret. The turret I can build out of the wrought iron, or... RHA steel. Considering it's a turret, it might get shot at a lot. Now, it comes with the bolted assembly Ausführung 1, uh, the German version, which has some slightly different specs to mine, but not by that much. It costs three times the resources. Um, it has the same amount of volume limit. It has crew safety of three. Mine with the bolted assembly has five. But this thing has greater structure. So it's better repairable. Um, and... I think this, yeah, this is base structural integrity, like how strong it is. This thing is stronger than mine, and it's also more repairable, but at the expense of crew safety. Let's go with something, something stronger, like the German ones. And then we have the hatch. I can have uh, my hatch on there, or the tier two hatch that the Germans have. So let's go with that. It's only going to take four days to engineer that. That's perfectly fine. Yes, I want to save the modified component. And in four days, we might be able to make the Whippets just a bit of a different tank. Also, the Research Bureau is something that I have adjusted slightly. I can now have 30 people working there on a single line. That's thanks to the Ergonomics Office. Fundamental Labs and stuff only give you a 3% reduction. Uh, yes, percentage-based things are always great to have, but they're also expensive. 
And it's going to take you 60 days to get this thing built. So that's two whole months that you're not going to be able to use it. That is fairly substantial. So keep that in mind. Um, as for the other buildings, again, for this particular building, they can be useful, certainly. Such as alloys, reduction of cost for special nodes that unlock various types of alloy and assembly. But at the moment, I don't want to spend too much money on getting the additional buildings. It might be a mistake. I'm not too sure, but just we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, the bank loan is in progress for another 892 days. That is something I can repay now. But if I repay it now, that's most of my money gone. So thank you, but uh, no thank you. Total loan payments, 15k per month. That should be in there some... It's not in there. That's interesting. I would like to see that in there in that list. So that I know what to expect when it comes to my money. I need something as important as a 15k cash flow to be registered over there. And right now it isn't. So if the devs are watching, that is something that I would very much like to see. Because it just makes it easier for a player to figure out, okay, this money's going here, this money's going there. And where's my other 15k going? Anyway, um, with the additional engineers in the research bureau, we're going to be getting the new armor very quickly. And I mean, not the new armor, uh, the new hull. We're also, yeah, we've completely reversed engineered the Leichte Kampfwagen, which is the German light tank. And it can now lead to some, um, some interesting choices, because like this one, I have the Whippet Mark 1 track. But I can also put the Leichtewagen on it. Which would make it pretty horrible to look at. Mobility is also a warning. It has four defects. If I use the Whippet... The agility is actually worse. Operational range is only 7 points. Versus 10. You're looking at better road speed. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Um, I'm going to stick to the Whippet. I think it just fits the tank better. In reverse... You can also do some horrible things to this. Uh, this is the L2. So the Leichte Kampfwagen, but with the Whippet tracks. I wouldn't strictly recommend it, but you can do it. I guess its mobility is pretty decent. Um, operational range, definitely not as decent. But hey, um, this is one of those trade-offs that you can make. Road speed 22, road speed 21... Operational range only 4, good lord. An obstacle trench with 9 versus... Yeah, 9 doesn't change. So, um, would I actually ship this? Probably not. It seems like it's more track than tank. But it is something that you can do in this game. And I really like that. Barely a day later and the Italians want a new bunch of tanks. They want 20. I hope that they will like my tank because I already have 5 stored. Uh, it's going to be a pretty... Well, it's a pretty decent margin. we got about three months, two and a half. What are the competitors offering? They're getting a score of 309. Damn. That's a hefty tank you got there. Um, the Kuban has a success score of 215? And you're... Oh. I'm... I'm paying 9k for this. Let's say 10k. And I'm getting 43k. That is bizarre. <laughs> That's a massive margin. I stand to make $860,000 from that. <laughs> okay. Uh, reputation for the Petrov Mark II B is pretty good, giving me a massive success score. But again, the price is higher. So what I can do is just have these guys pay through the nose. Uh, we're going to stick to that contract deadline of 3.8. And I need to beat... What was it? 300? 309. There. 50k. Okay, we'll make it... I'm, I'm going to give you an offer you can't, can't refuse. 49.99.5. There we go. 314. It means I'm just above the Ajax and the Hector. And I score better than average, or better than required in most categories. So yeah, let's send that in. Uh, they need 20 tanks. If I can start crafting these things early, I can make a lot of money. 
a lot of money. I got plenty of time. I may be able to do 25 tanks. I'm not going to go over that. Because I'm not too confident yet. But yeah. Let's send it in. See what the Italians think. I'm going to go ahead and assume that they want the tank. I have already made preparations to build additional tanks. So let's say that we're going to be crafting uh, all 25. Unfortunately, I don't have the resources. The resources are going to be coming in, I believe, momentarily. Because I did place an order with Asia and expect those resources to be delivered within the week or so. Yeah, a week. So a week, uh, then craft 20 tanks. And then ship all 25 out to the Italians, which are going to be paying an arm and a leg. Well, and a pizza, in this case, for these tanks. They are definitely going to be funding my operation for a very long time. If this goes well. Which I really hope it does. Now, I also... Yes, they've accepted the contract. Um, I have also made a new tank line. Uh, which is the... I didn't save it. Uh, the Petrov here, the Mark IV no-tail. This is basically the Petrov Mark III Mark or Mark IIb. Uh, in the sense that it has no cart that it's dra dragging behind it. This might make it slightly faster, so slightly more maneuverable. But it's going to score less, I think, in the maneuverability points when it comes to crossing trenches. Because that's something that it'll not be doing very well. You need to be a driver. Uh, you need to be a gunner, gunner, load a gunner, loader, another loader, and I'll take two mechanics. There. Unless I can have a loader mechanic. There. You. Oh, we got way too many loaders now. Let's unload you. No pun intended. Okay. Um, with this, we're only going to be using... A few, well, a few a few less of the crew spots, which is nice. Let's set the expendables. I mean, the whole crew's expendable in a tank, but that's not strictly what they mean, I think. Standard ammo and petrol 47. We're going to paint this thing in a nice-ish camo scheme. And we're going to say this is the uh, petrol... Let's say the Mark II C... Because it is a slightly different design. This one has not that, that set of wheels. Uh, its weight is less. It's priced lower. It takes fewer resources. And it takes 600 man hours fewer to build. So let's... What? I didn't engineer everything. Oh, I put the Daimler 4 cylinder in here. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we're going to have to put the Daimler Knight 6 cylinder in. Because I think the 4 cylinder is... Fairly underpowered. It isn't? What? Hold on. This thing has... Better road speed? It has better road speed. It has better operational range. It has better obstacle step height. We're gonna have to... Uh, add this new engine. Let's go and engineer this new engine. This is the four-cylinder thing. Uh, I got the side brakes Mark 1 or Mark 2... That's going to make this thing more agile and more stealthy, which is also a factor that I think comes into play later. We got the flywheel. Um, it's the same. This one, however, is slightly smaller and a lot lighter. And it takes less man hours and it's cheaper. Okay, the Germans get it. Carburetor, can't change that. Radiator, look at the Mark I or the Mark II. My Mark I versus their Mark II. I think their Mark II is going to be far better of an option because it has better obstacle slope it has better crew comfort yeah sounds good transmission basically everything that says two i think is going to be better than one in this game it's just the, the mark ii version of it so let's say save that build an engine in four days i don't know how they do it but apparently you can and then we are going to be building the mark three or mark mark ii c petrov also the improved medium hull is ready. Let's have a look at that. The improved medium hull. Uh, medium Hornet tanks. Here we go. I would like to create a draft of this tank. Yes, thank you very much. We're going to be getting the Daimler... Well, might be the Daimler four-cylinder. That German invention. Then... 
We can either have the Whippet tracks on here, or we can have the Leichtewagen. Uh, the Leichtewagen is less stealthy, but... I'm looking over here at the stats. Operational range is 12 versus 10. So these, these Leichtewagen tracks, they look a little out of place. Transportability with this thing is better somehow. I don't quite get that. Long range mobility of the tank for very... Oh, okay. Road speed, obstacle trench width is 10 versus 11. I don't know how that works. So I think by all intents and purposes, this thing is better. I will have to engineer it first, of course. Um, side mounted machine gun. I haven't engineered these yet. No, actually, I copied it. I just haven't re-engineered it yet, if you will. So this is just what I have. The Lewis or the machine gun. Let's go with the Lewis because it is cheaper. I don't think that this thing is going to be getting any hard firepower. So it doesn't get the option to bring a bigger gun. It's just a super machine gun carrier. But look at that. We got five machine guns on one tank. Which means you're going to have to have a lot of gunners. And that might not fit on this tank. That might prove a little difficult. Let's see if that would fit. Um, you're a driver. Mechanic slots are down here. So a mechanic. Yeah, it should fit. I guess nobody's going to be loading these things. But whatever. Uh, crew awareness. Problematic. Two defects. Oh. Blocked vision ports because of the crew limit. So if I have... Yeah, okay. So the more people you put on the tank, the more cramped it's going to be. But if I remove a gunner, I'm not going to be able to use all the guns, am I? So we're going to throw in the gunner and the mechanic here. Expendables. I don't need this shell. I shouldn't be able to bring this shell. Here. Petrol. Paint it. Switch cam. I'm not seeing the paint. Oh, because the whole thing is a concept. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yes, I'm going to save this. Okay. RHA. I think the German bolts are better than mine. So we're going to go with those. Ammo stowage. These things now have a sight. External communication. They have fuel stowage. They have vision ports. But the Germans have already unlocked vision port 3. Which has better crew awareness, better crew aiming, and better external crew communications. Looks like an overall upgrade. They also have ventilation. I have Mark 2s. They have Mark 1. Crew comfort is 6 versus 7. So favoring mine. Operational range is better, and side ricochet is better. So let's bring this. I'm not strictly looking at the weight, so I hope it's not going to uh, cost me too much. Over here we have the potential to add a roof. This is not something that every tank needs, but I believe the roof does help in allowing top ricochets. So let's say grenades that are getting thrown on top of the tank would normally, like this, just lie there and explode. With a, a cope cage, if you will, that isn't a thing. And then we have the tail wheel. I guess that's going to increase my agility. Yeah, by a few points. But it also adds quite a lot to the man hour cost. Let's go without that. That should do it. All right. So, uh, medium hornet mark one. No, 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 no. Um, Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov. In order to stay with the campaign trend. Oh, crap. I'm already working on a project. Yeah, you're right. I'm already working on a project. I'm going to have to wait until that is completed. In the meanwhile, research. Let's continue with researching more gear. Because we now have this improved hull. Let's see if we have some tracks to boot with that. Like the Hornet track. This is what's supposed to go on that tank. It's going to take 38 days until we research that. So it's going to be a while. Hopefully... I can actually make that work. Because I would like to get that tank produced. Uh, there's the shipment. The game auto pauses when something happens, such as a shipment arriving. So I can now start pushing out these tanks. 
very quickly. They wanted... What? Oh, crap. I didn't order enough materials. Shit. Okay. I got 63 days, though. So we got five in stock. Um... It should say in contracts, like the amount of tanks that are getting contracted. They want the Petrov Mark II B, and I said I was going to deliver 25. I only have five, so I'm going to have to order a lot more resources in order to make all of these tanks. I'm building, what, 10? Uh, production. Yeah, I'm building 10, so I need resources for another 10. All right, bring it over for the Petrov. I'm going to take another 10, which Oceania can provide. Asia can provide in 21 days, which should line up. Europe is, again, very expensive. Middle East doesn't have the resources. Yeah, okay. Asia, once again, start shipping things because I need them here. As for shipping out the tanks, um, I can just to create a sort of buffer in case... Everything goes wrong, but I rather doubt that it will. Unfortunately, if this does get delayed, it means that my production hall is going to be, well, idle for a while. Which is not something I really want, but, well, so be it. Another new contract has come up. Austria-Hungary, also in the market for new tanks. What would you like, gentlemen? What would you like? What are the others offering? Once again, Ajax and Je uh, Hector. So 308 is what I have to beat. Uh, their focus is on hard firepower protection and repairability. Right. Okay, so in this case, I don't think that the Kuban is really going to be doing the work. Um, it still somehow has a pretty decent success score. Because it's... Yes, it's massively overperforming on soft firepower. <laughs> So if I could build the Kuban like with one machine gun, I guess that would work. Uh, we also got the the LT Mark One. I, I didn't build this thing, right? I didn't build it. But for 7.7k, it has a success score of 500. Why? It's extremely well protected, and I guess the Kuban isn't. Well, not as well. So I can offer up the the LT Mark One. I? I didn't even build that, right? I'm sure, why I have two designs here? It must have changed something. Uh, this has a lower success score. Okay, well, here you go. You're gonna get the LT Mark One. Um, the question is, when do you want it? September. Right. It's going to be a bit of a challenge because I'm already working on building additional Petrovs at the moment. So I can definitely ship the LT Mark 1s out pretty quick. Especially since they're really small tanks. But I'm not sure if it's going to be this fast. But seriously, a success score of 500. How much can I have these people pay? What? Okay. 53,000 round. Keep in mind, I'm... This is bizarre. I'm getting 53k for a tank that pretty much costs me 7,000. 7,700, and that's not counting manpower, because I'm, I'm paying my people anyway. Yeah, you need a bit of resources, but... Well... Okay, if this is what they want, this is what I'm going to offer. I do have another shipment of resources coming in, ideally soon. And I have a couple of sh uh, tanks already shipped. There we go. That's the last of the Petrovs. Let's ship the rest of the Petrovs out. And this should make the Italians very happy with our new tank group. Something that I find very hard to believe is that the L2, it only has a machine gun. So it completely failed the requirement of the contract when it comes to the ability to deal with hard targets. But they don't seem to care. They just don't seem to care, because everything else on the tank was fantastic. But if you're dealing with enemy tanks, you just have a machine gun, good luck. You're going to have a really hard time. 
there anything? Uh, no, I already completed the reverse engineering. So this is what I'm building, right? The Leichter Kampfwagen. It's not even my design. I completely reverse engineered it. And somehow, the original creator of that vehicle didn't send it in for consideration. Which I find rather curious. I do need my design bureau to get cleared up, though. There. Accepted! <laughs> the Austro-Hungarians like it. Yeah, go figure. Uh, I like it too, this one. Have I engineered everything? No, I have not engineered the hull yet. Well, look, they accepted the, the concept as is. Right? They accepted the concept as is, so I don't need to boost anything. It's going to be a fairly shit tank. But if they accept it, all the power to my bank account. Anyway, um, I did produce a design for the Kuznetsov, so I want to test drive one of these. This is the one that has no additional gears and five machine guns. Uh, we're going to be definitely not getting any kind of points when it comes to dealing with hard targets. Because I can't. I just have machine guns coming out of my ears. Somehow it's going to shoot right under the cage on the back. Uh... Yeah, sure, I guess. We'll just... Ooh, it does suffer here a bit. Look at that. The tank did not enjoy that little experience with that trench. Now, seeing as I cannot kill hard targets, we're just going to have to kill soft targets either faster or more of them. I guess that's going to be the way to get the points that I need. Beyond that... Maybe doing the track faster, but this thing does not appear to be making a whole lot of speed. Might have something to do with the fact that it is uh, not that well powered. Firepower wise, it is pretty nice. Let's hope this... Oh! It couldn't get up the ramp? Uh, that's that machine gun. This is the one that I want. Ooh, gun depression on this machine gun could be a problem. You're gonna have to, like, depress the whole tank? <laughs> In order to get this machine gun. <laughs> Alright, can we use this? Nope. Just costing me a ton of time here. Kill the one target, thank you very much. Like, this is what the tank is supposed to do. Move. Oh boy, yeah, I can imagine why people don't want this tank. Because with this engine, it is underpowered. But what I really appreciate about this game is that you can re-engineer that. You can get... Okay, so the tank in its current design is underpowered. I'm not even going to complete this. Um, in its current design is underpowered. We're going to have to research a better engine. And that's something you can do with the research bureau. I'm currently working on the light naval gun, but if I put a better engine through the research bureau and then put it on the tank, I guess that should work. So, um, all is well. I'm getting a lot of money from the Italians. I am already getting another contract. The design bureau is waiting for the engineering bureau to complete their work on the L2. Then I can design the L2, then I can build the L2, and can ship the L2. All of it, not my design. Um, let's hope I don't get a copyright strike from whoever designed the tank first. Uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. That's it for this episode, though. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I shall look forward to seeing you in the next video.